Welcome to Hands-On Tarot, where I show you the many ways you can use tarot for more than just divination and help you grow your tarot practice. I'm Susie Gourlay, and I've been using tarot for many years to create my future rather than just predict it. Today we're going to be exploring uh, year-long studies with tarot and different decks and different ideas that you can use if you're looking to make a year-long tarot practice. So the first one I want to start with is one that I've been doing for the last couple of years um, using the Wildwood Tarot. So there's a couple books that you can get um, that goes along. Well, first of all, the guidebook is really amazing. Um, it goes through in quite a lot of depth. Um, each card, of course, and where it kind of falls within the wheel of the year. Um, so this is one thing that I celebrate uh, myself. So it makes a lot of sense for me to um, use my cards in correlation with the wheel of the year. But um, there's also a workbook by the makers of the Wildwood Tarot. And it's a, a really nice in-depth uh, guidebook, I suppose. It's a bit more than the guidebook, but um, it does help you um, kind of go a little bit deeper into the Wildwood Tarot, which is a little bit different than a normal Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, they mostly use um, a lot of uh, Druidry images um, and beliefs that go through that as well. Um, each of the court cards, they pair with an animal. Um, and I'll go through that a little bit more when I show you my book here. Like for example, King of Vessels. So this would be King of Cups is the Heron. Queen of Vessels is the Salmon. Um, who else have I got here? Knight of Arrows is the Hawk. King of Arrows is the Kingfisher. Um, and there's reasons that they've chosen these animals as well um, within this deck. But the book that is mainly the one that I follow is A Year in the Wildwood. So what it is, is a book that goes through and breaks down each of the cards and includes a bit of um, journal prompts to go with them as well and it separates everything up you know you can see the dates here so Queen of Arrows is February 26th to March 22nd um, it also uses the so for example here with the time of Imbolc to Beltane is in the time of Arrows so that would be the air element of swords so we're going through the swords suit um, it has hub cards, which are the major arcana cards, so in this case the shaman. First festival is Imbolc, and it gives you guardians of Imbolc, so Ancestor and the Polestar, which are also cards within the major arcana. It's a waxing moon celebration. The sun of life begins his reign. So we have the spring equinox festival in March, and then there's the guardians of the spring equinox, which are the stag and the archer, which is a sunrise celebration. So the active suit is arrows, the element is air, season is spring, direction is east. We have our court card guardians, so kingfisher, swan, hawk, and wren. And these make a lot of sense when you go through them. And then the keywords for arrows is mind, intellect, logic, communication, loss, and knowledge. So it goes through each of these cards throughout that entire suit, starting with the shaman, which is the hub card. So... Basically, while you go through this deck, you're journeying through the Wildwood and you're meeting all of these key players along the way and you're learning lessons from them as well. So what I have been doing is pulling out these hub cards, the guardians, um, my court cards when I get to them and the card that I'm currently working on in that time. So, for example... If I was working from February 1st to 9th, I'd have my Ace of Arrows out. And I would go through and journal about the prompts that they're asking. So in this case, um, 
I kind of have all these cards up on my tarot desk and I'm seeing them all the time and I'm able to associate the lessons that are within this deck with what's going on currently in my life. And I do find there is quite a lot of correlation. Um, so I enjoyed this quite a bit when I did it the previous year. Um, so for example, I pulled 12 cards to mark the months. Um, and I also uh, put those in my planner as well on what month I was on and what the card was I pulled. I color-coded everything as well, <laughs> um, which might be a little anal, but um, this I felt was much easier. I also used tabs to organize my notebook a little bit more here. Um, but what I did is I read each part of the book. I wrote down any notes that I wanted to within the text of the book, and then I answered the questions. So, for example here, um, looks like I started it in bulk. So, I think this was more like end of year, beginning of year. So, I started this at the after Christmas here. So, um, you know, what old hurt troubles you the most? Is it physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual? What small steps can you take to release the pain? What joy can you bring in to heal the wound? What can you do to better support your wellness? So January 4th to January 12th, the card I had was Eight of Stones, which is represented by skill. So that would be Eight of Pentacles. Where do your skills lie? What skills do your various tribes see you as having? Do you have or sorry, how do you improve on them? And how does your self-discipline waver? Um, and I would just go through throughout the year and take my notes, answer the questions. And with those prompts in there, you can see and correlate how those patterns are coming up in your daily life, which I quite like because it shows you how you can use tarot in everyday life and how it really does mirror what's going on. So I found this to be really, really helpful. Um, so much so that I did it again this year. Um, so here's my journal working through the entire year. Um, I started again at the beginning of the year. They suggest, suggest you start at bulk, which is February 1st. Um, but I started at the beginning of the year, opened my book to where that would be uh, January wise and just work through it that way. So it separates it up by light, uh, the light half of the year, the dark half, um, you know, what it's ruled by. I actually just got a calendar from Alison Cross who wrote this book, A Year in the Wildwood, and uh, she maps everything out for you on a calendar. So I'm going to include that um, next year as well, just so I can kind of um, continue on with it. So I really recommend... A uh, year in the wildwood if you're looking for a really in-depth study that isn't too time consuming because there's only about four questions usually per card and the cards are about a week or so long so it's not like you have to do this every day so it doesn't get overwhelming um, but it also helps you learn the cards and where they fall within certain sections of the year Another book and deck that is very similar to this would be the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. So that's this one here. This is the box it comes in. Um, the guidebook is, is quite nice as well. Um, the cards are a little bit bigger, but they are uh, good quality. This is another deck that you can do something very similar with, with the Wheel of the Year, um, and connect more so the elements of the year um, with what's going on in your daily life. So um, instead of saying Eight of Cups, this one would be Eight of Water. The um, She does have different goddesses. For example, here, Goddess of Earth, so this would be Hathor. Um, so if you're looking to work with some other goddesses, that's kind of a, a cool way to do it. One difference uh, which, 
with the Witch's Wisdom Tarot to the regular Rider Waite Smith is the Major Arcana is opposite. So it starts with the world and it ends with the Pilgrim, which is card number zero. Um, so that's a, it's basically the reverse of the Major Arcana that you're probably used to. Um, but of course they have their reasons for that as well. So um, you can definitely use the Witch's Wisdom Tarot in very much the same way as the Wildwood Tarot um, to have a year long practice with the elements and the Wheel of the Year. Another deck where you can work kind of within um, the Druid aspect here is the Druid Craft Tarot. Um, this is a really wonderful guidebook as well, as you can see how thick it is. Um, lots of information in here. Um, the reason I chose this one to kind of show you is they have this meeting of the inner and outer worlds chart within the book. Um, the cycles and the seasons, the mysteries of time. Um, and you can lay out this card and see how your everyday consciousness functions, um, you know, within this entire wheel. As you can see, they also use Wheel of the Year aspects here, Winter Solstice, Imbolks, Spring Equinox, Beltane, that sort of thing. Um, so they have the Major Arcana in the middle here. They're using the Court cards in the next layer out and the outside layer is the minor arcana. So you can use this wheel really with any deck um, and see how it correlates with your everyday year-long life, I suppose. <laughs> um, these cards are really awesome too. Um, they are a little bit bigger than a regular sized tarot deck. Um, example here, Judgment is called Rebirth in this deck. Um, but this is a, I really like the images with this. Um, they do correlate quite well with, uh, the symbolism that, uh, we quite often see within the Rider Waite Smith, but there is that Druid aspect to it as well. Um, one thing in here is Temperance is actually called, is actually the Alchemist, um, which does make a lot of sense because, that is somewhat what uh, temperance is all about, you know, combining things um, to create something else. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. It isn't a word I cannot pronounce. Um, but if you look at your temperance card with the Rider Waite Smith deck, you often see that triangle right in the middle of the angel's chest, which is a symbol for alchemy. Um, so we see the alchemist here working. Um, you know, pouring things and mixing things about. So it is a really wonderful deck. Um, I highly recommend it. And it's another one that you can use for a year long study. So this is the Druid Craft Tarot. One that I got recently um, that I was looking through is this Kantiki Oracle. Um, it's a really interesting deck in along the lines of, it's an oracle deck, not a tarot. Um, it has circular cards, which I like. Um, as a witch myself, uh, circles hold a lot of meaning for me. So I do like circular cards. When working with oracle decks, um, I do more so like pulling a card and thinking about it for a day or three days or a week at a time. Um, and what I really liked about the first thing with opening this deck is I had done a reading for a woman the day before and a lot of the concepts that are in this deck we had discussed in her reading. So I had pulled out some cards for her and sent her the cards and then the images in the guidebook to, uh, to help her gain some meaning from that as well. So this uh, deck, it looks like it's some watercolors here. Um, there's some really interesting ones like here. You are seen, the exploding star, carried by the current, the self-tending fire, your ears become a butterfly, the Calvin Glacier, you fall into the sea, 
unburdened bones, what the worms know. Um, but with this deck, you can also do a year-long study, and it gives you um, the practice within the guidebook here. Um, it's called uh, a walk, which I'll discuss another kind of walk that you can do. But um, it says there are 52 cards, so you can work with one card per week um, as a point of inquiry or inspiration throughout the year. So they give you some... A breakdown of how you can start by starting on the solstice sun or the winter solstice which is coming up soon um, or you can also just start you know at card number one and work through as well it says you uh, you can start with the second card if you're a week later um, and so on throughout the year working through each card in numbers or you might even begin with card number 27 the exploding star on the summer solstice so you can work with the Wheel of the Year, kind of similar to the other decks that I talked about with this one. Um, it also mentions starting on a lunar phase. So you can use the Dark Solstice Sun, which is card number one. Um, the first, or a new moon, first quarter, full or last quarter that occurs just before the winter solstice. So you can kind of use these um, through the moon phases as well. So it's kind of a really nice deck it uses um it's kind of a development tool there's prompts on each card there's an ecological connection with the cards um, you can use them for creative writing um, as a practice a portal an icon the symbology they give um, some of the guidance from each card so there's a lot more than just keywords associated with this deck um, there's a lot that you can do with each card so you can make it a bit more of a year-long study. Um, so I might do this uh, at some time um, in the future. So I thought that was kind of a, a really interesting deck to do with an, or with an Oracle deck anyway. So the other one that I wanted to talk about with walks is um, one that I've been doing at work actually is this is a deck and walk so it is combining astrology with tarot cards throughout a year so i started in um our, our may so started at aries here and i started with i'll make this a little bit bigger here so march 21st i started with the two of wands um so we know we're in a fire season we're in aries Mars is the ruling planet. Um, I also included the Queen of Wands and the Page and Ace of Pentacles. So I have, I would have those four cards up near my desk and I see them on a, on a daily basis and it goes through about 10 days or so um, going through each zodiac and each card throughout the tarot. So basically a decan um so each zodiac is divided into three subcategories as you can see here each zodiac so aries has those three subcategories um and these subcategories are 10 degrees of the astrological wheel and these are called decans so each zodiac sign takes up 30 degrees of the astrology wheel or the zodiac wheel so the first decan is between 0 and 10 degrees, the second 11 to 20, and so on. Um, so the cool thing about this is it helps you with learning astrology. It's helpful in visualizing the houses within the zodiac and the tarot cards that lie within them. Um, we can also view these cards through the lens of the ruling planets, their zodiac, the elements, and images. So currently it is November 26th, I believe, so we are within Sagittarius. Jupiter is the ruling planet. Um, we are in, so Sagittarius is a fire sign and I fall within this card here. So right now is the Eight of Wands. So um, taking action. Um, I see the sign of Mercury here. So also being very, um, thinking about communication, um, so right now at work, I have the Eight of Wands up on my desk, along with the Knight of Wands, 
the Page of Cups and the Ace of Cups. So then I look at those cards together and see how those fit within my daily life. So previous to that, I had the Seven of Cups, which was being overwhelmed. <laughs> um, and then I move now into the Eight of Wands on taking action, using communication, getting those things off my plate so that my next card that I move into would be the Nine of Wands, um, you know, being prepared, having that experience. So it's a really great way to help you learn about the astrology of the cards and kind of where they fall in the ear. I've also touched on these a few times within readings um, with my clients. If a certain card comes up when we're in that season or within that decan. Um, so I did have some tarot readings um, just last weekend and you know the eight of wands came up twice which I thought was pretty interesting because we're kind of in that phase now. So that's something you can look at. I'll post a really great YouTube video um, that helped me a lot with that. Um, I'll probably do this again next year because I'm still learning um, that aspect. So that's a really cool one. Myself, though, next year I am going to um, really revolve my tarot practice around the moon. So in a previous podcast, we had talked about using lunar energy um, with our tarot cards. So I'm going to do that for next year. So a couple books that I have to help me with that are this Moon Magic book by DJ Conway. Um, I really, really love this book. She has recipes in here, correspondences, and I use the correspondences to create um, a different altar each month for the full moon. So, um, for example, uh, the hunter moon, I would probably use deer, perhaps the color brown. Actually, let's go to the hunter moon here. I think actually they put it within blood moon. Um, so of course there's different names for the full moons, but so in this case, um, you know, the correspondence is here and I, you know, wouldn't fit within this myself. Um, like I said, I would probably use deer, so I might have antlers on my, on my, um, altar. I'll use certain colors. So I might use, you know, dark blue and green. I might use brown, um, animals so stag so that's that deer um, I definitely do not have elephants in Canada so probably not that um, we do have rams and that sort of thing I if I have any bird symbolism like heron crow or robin um, I'll use those robin for me is more of a summer spring bird um, when I see robins I know spring is coming so crow would probably fall a bit more into that um, being a scavenger themselves um, and I use this power flow to here. So for example, to let go, inner cleansing, karma and reincarnation, justice and balance and inner harmony. Um, so this kind of falls within that equinox time, um, just as an example here. Herbs, if I have any of these in particular, I might incorporate them on my altar, um, that sort of thing. So I will work through this book and I have done this previously but mostly with just um, setting different altars for each full moon um, but I found that this book was really helpful for that. I've also mentioned this moon book I believe within the podcast about working with lunar magic so the moon book by Sarah Faith Gotten's daughter or diner sorry I thought that was Icelandic um, and she has a really great um, or this book is really awesome for working with different moon phases, um, you know, tarot spreads that are involved, that sort of thing. So if you listened to the podcast on working with lunar magic, I'm really going to incorporate that this year, um, within my tarot practice. I also have some Oracle cards here that I got in a deck, um, that I might use, so, for example, feeling the full weight of the moon's energy, breathe deeply to fill your body from head to toe with her warmth, reflect on what needs to be healed, and create a picture in your mind of what that looks like. So, these are just kind of uh, little activities or prompts that you can use. 
So I might incorporate this deck as well. And I also bought these 13 candles um, from Moon Dips, which I believe they're from Winnipeg. Um, so I plan on working with these candles throughout the year. So there's 13 for the 13 moons, uh, full moons, and I'm going to burn each one of these down while I do my tarot practice. Just a couple more things as well. Um, this is a really wonderful book, The Spirit Almanac um, by Emma Lowe and Lindsay Kellner. Um, it works through an entire year. Most of it is self-care aspects, but it does have some tarot related to it, um, some ritual type stuff, um, some astrology, and helping you kind of feel within the seasons and really connect with the seasons on a level which is what what I really love doing um, it gives you some information about how other cultures celebrate different things throughout the year and it also has where is one here uh, a note section here we go note section to answer some of the questions and the prompts that it gives in here so this is a really thoughtful book um, it's one I was really drawn to, and I think because I love that word almanac, and I know it's a year-long thing. <laughs> um, but this is quite a thoughtful book on just some a gentle way of working through a year-type study. And finally, the last book I want to talk about is this Tarot Almanac. So I got this very recently. Um... This is also what I'm going to work through next year, starting at the beginning of the year. Um, this book breaks things down by months. So January would be the magic of gravity, February the magic of space, March the magic of the invisible, and so on. Um, so within each month, so here's January for example. It says, feel the weight of your deck, hold the card steady in your hands, and acknowledge the time it's taken to get all the way to this very spot. As your year begins, January's cosmic energies want you to begin with the beauty of your bones. This month's tarot cards cut our teeth on one question. How will you handle your gravity? So it tells you about the time of year it is. Um... The cards that you can use, so in this case, they're using the devil and the world. Um, there's some questions they ask. They also have mid-month minor arcana cards here. So we have Ace of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, Three and Four of Pentacles. They have some prompts for those as well. And then a court or court cards to kind of close the month. And in this case, it's the Queen of Pentacles. Give yourself ground. So I really, um, <laughs> there's a spread too with this one as well, the floor plan spread. So I really think this is a, a nice in-depth book that'll go through the entire deck and um, really incorporate tarot in my everyday life. Um, it also has some tarot scopes here as well. So I think... I haven't read too far in this because I don't want to ruin any surprises, um, but I am going to be starting in January with this book as well. So I'm going to be doing a lunar study with the tarot and then working through this tarot almanac as well, which is um, a really cool one to find. So the tarot almanac is by Beth Matassa. Um, I get a lot of my books from bookoutlet.com or .ca, um, even the decks that I have quite often, the Druid Craft, for example, is on there for 20 bucks. Um, I received this Wild Magic book on there as well, often they'll have Wildwood Tarot on there, um, so I'm letting you in on one of my secrets here, but... Um, you can get a lot of really great tarot books, tarot decks, and witchcraft books on bookoutlet.com. I think the Witch's Wisdom Tarot might be on there currently right now as well, too. So um, if you're seeing this now, go check it out. 
Um, I look at it every day, so I make sure I catch anything and if it's up um, and I'm interested in buying it. So this was one of the books that I got, um, which I highly recommend. So these are just a couple that I have. Of course, there's probably a lot more. Um, if you have year-long practices um, within books or decks that you want to share, please let me know because I would always uh, love to add to my list of um, books to read <laughs> and decks to get. <laughs> um, but incorporating tarot as an everyday practice really is what I do. So... Um, any recommendations, I really appreciate. So I hope you find that uh, this episode was insightful. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at handsontarot at gmail.com. You can visit my website at suzygorlay.com or find me on Instagram at handsontarot or woollywitch. Thanks for listening. I'm Susie Gorlay and I see tarot in your future.